Shalom and welcome to the Malibu Jewish Center and Synagogue, Challenging Torah. The challenge this week is to see. The word see, ra'e, as a commandment, is the opening word of this Torah portion. See, I set before you this day blessing or curse. Blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin upon you today, and curse, if you do not obey the commandments, but turn away from the Torah and from the path that I enjoin you this day. It's really simple, Moses says. Everybody who's up for a blessing, stand on this mountain. Everybody who doesn't think a blessing is what they want in their life, but a curse, you could stand over there. It's like dealing with a kindergarten class and getting them to understand basic behavior. Not so simple. But we know that our lives are filled with choice. And that's what Moses is saying here. First, we need to see what our choices are. We need to see our world. Just as Shema asks us to listen and to be very aware of the sound of God's voice, we are asked to see, not God's voice, but God's world. We are asked to pay attention. This is really a mindfulness question. How do we see what is around us? And when we see clearly, how do we make choices? So in order to see, we first need to step back, pay minute attention, pay attention to our own breath, our own being, our own meditation, our own awareness, and live life consciously, because we, unlike angels, have the ability to make choices. This year, we're starting a project about Musar, which is really qualities of how you live your life. And one of the very first qualities or Musar points that are talked about, which we will start this year, in this year of living mindfully, is the Bahira point. The choice point in my life when I decide first that I have a choice, not just to react, and then do I go this way or this way? Which way of these paths really is the blessing and which is the curse? We have what some of the Hasidim call radical choice. Angels can only do what angels are told to do, but we are not angels. We are given a lot of free will. The problem is not everything is given to us as free will. So sometimes, sometimes the world is in a place where we have a choice of how to react to what happens to us, even if we haven't chosen that path to happen. Coming here today, I was stuck for two and a half hours on the PCH, something that all of us who live in Malibu live with all the time. Well, it's a choice. I listened to my favorite Friday afternoon radio programs. I made the choice to breathe and look at the ocean. Didn't mean I wasn't worried about getting back here on time. But for most of the journey, I was able to choose a path that there was some blessing in it. We are given these choices in every minute and in every breath. As we choose how to react, we either bring a blessing or curse to our lives. You know that bag of chips? The one that I'm only going to open and take one, especially around 10 o'clock at night when I'm sitting at the computer? We know that we have very little choice over the addictions in our life. We have very little choice over that which takes over what we call the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination. And those choice points are often between the Yetzer HaTov, that which says to choose blessing, and the Yetzer HaRa, that says, no, no, over here it's going to be a lot more interesting and salty and yummy and greasy and good. That's how we live our lives. God says, follow this path, and I will bring you blessing. How do I follow this path, I ask? Well, God comes up with certain guidelines. First of all, you are to choose a place for my name to dwell. It's interesting. God doesn't say, 
Jerusalem will be the place, but you're supposed to figure it out. You go find it. And so as they enter the land, they have to find the place that is the place to put the sanctuary to hold God's name. We also choose a place inside of us for God to dwell. We could close that door totally, or we can be aware. After we have made that commitment, then God says, you know what? We're going to get it to the basics. Let's look at food. Food. And suddenly the Torah says, when you desire to eat meat, because vegetarianism would have been the right answer, but clearly we can't quite pull it off yet. It was that you had to go to a point where there was an altar, make a sacrifice, and that was the only meat you had was sacrificial meat. Now God says, since I have one major sanctuary when you enter the land, you may slaughter outside of the land. You may keep kosher through your shechita, through your slaughtering. And, and by the way, remember the milk and meat thing. God reminds you, just in case you forgot, and we're thinking of that beef bourguignon. And so we are allowed to eat meat, and then we talk to food for everyone. Food sufficiency, as we say, or insufficiency. And God says, let the land lie fallow every seven years. Release your kinsmen who are slaves every seven years. Follow the rules. There will not be a needy person among you. And then at the end of the paragraph, Moses says, but if there should be a needy person, then you are to open up your hand and do so with great graciousness and God will bless you because you need to take care of the needy kinsmen and the paragraph ends for there will always be the needy among you. Finally God says follow these directions beware of false prophets remember my name and come home for the holidays. Seriously three times a year I need you home. All your males will appear before me bearing gifts, always bring a present home for the holidays. Celebrate together, be community together, and you will have and be a blessing. Shabbat Shalom.